Hello and welcome to The Graham Show. I'm your host, Graham Douglas, and today I have with me a friend and mentor, Thomas Schumacher, who's the president of Disney Theatrical. Welcome to the show, Tom. Graham, I'm happy to be part of the kickoff of The Graham Show. And I want to start off with what life was like for you as a, as a youngster living in San Francisco Bay Area. There was fantastic funding for the arts. So for a kid who wanted to work in the arts, wanted to be part of the arts, growing up in the 70s in a culturally rich place like San Francisco was a huge thing to my advantage. So art and culture was part of school, part of the community, and part of everyone's life. My dad um, played the guitar, okay. and at home, um, there were, uh, and it, particularly in our, in our summer home, there were sing-alongs. So there was always singing and music in the house. My mother um, had a small collection of, um, of original cast albums, but a very small collection of them that were played over and over and over again. It was like the Music Man. Um, Hello Dolly, the Carol Channing version, The Sound of Music, the Mary Martin version. So we would listen to the original Broadway cast albums as both of the film soundtracks of these things. And that was part of the life of our house, although no one in my house actually um, was particularly engaged in theater. Uh, my mother would have to give up household furniture. Um, her dining room table was gone for an extended period while I was directing a production of Barton Wilder's The Long Christmas Dinner. Okay. Um, she lost her china, the entire dining room set, um, a buffet, um, yeah, all the dishes. At one point you were playing Pippin in Pippin, and it was at that moment that you realized that you no longer wanted to pursue acting anymore. I had had an acting teacher who had a huge impact on my life, a woman named Lenore DeCoven, when I was a student at UCLA, and she had said this one thing to us, which is, if you don't have to act to breathe, you're not an actor. Mm -hmm. Meaning that if the only way you can actually stay alive is to keep acting, if your soul needs it so deeply, then you're an actor. But if you, if you view it casually, or I could do a few things, or I might want to act, she says, you're not really an actor. And on the closing night of Pippin, which was the last show of the season of Summerstock, I walked off stage, having played this big part and other roles all summer long in Revolving Rep, I thought, this isn't me. I don't have to act to breathe. Acting doesn't bring me my greatest happiness. And I realized that so many people that I was so fond of and respected so much were just so much better than I was. So when I went back to UCLA for my final year as a senior, I approached them, a brilliant man named John Cobble who ran the producing program there and I said, I think I want to be a producer. And he took me under his wing and was gigantically supportive to me. And I finished up UCLA and came out planning to be a producer and have my own theater company. What was it about producing that, that interested you? Well, there's a number of different kinds of producers, right, in the theater. Some case producers are people who raise money and look at this as a business enterprise and um, invest that money in, um, in entertainment activities. But what I liked about producing and the producers in my life and people I'd watched came at it from a very creative side. There were people who wanted to bring together the components to make a show. Who's gonna design it? What's the show gonna be? Who's gonna direct it? Who's gonna be in it? How's it gonna look? How's it gonna feel? What's the best environment to put it in? All the things that bring the elements of the theater together. And producing does that. And so it called on my left and right brain activities at the same time. Mm -hmm. It allowed me to be in the mix with making stuff. Um, it allowed me, with my bossy authoritarian nature, to um, have an outlet for that. Um, but it also gave me a chance to do the thing I love, which is to nurture and bring things along. And th things that may not immediately seem strong or worthy, but that might have something inside it that I'm allowed to then help pull up and out. And I love being part of a team. What skills do you think you you had, you have, that in order that enabled you to not only juggle so many jobs, but move up so quickly? I think because I had always operated multi-generationally, meaning that when I was in high school, I didn't do high school musicals. I did musicals in my community theater. I was working with people who were younger than me, and people who were much, much older than me. Right. And I think I was able to comfortably flow in and around that. Because I had, at a very young age, had already had a lot of experience. I started working professionally in the theater when I was 15. By the time I was in my early 20s, I, I had a lot of experience, but also a willingness to do anything. Mm -hmm. I never said no to a job, which gets to a troubling fact about me. I have never gotten a job I asked for other than food service or retail. So I've done those two careers, and those you have a job application for, and you do every other job I've had, someone said, Want to come do this with us? We're starting a company, we're starting a thing, we need somebody, and they just offered me the job. Mm -hmm.